Cheers, guys, to halfway. Yeah. Cheers. I'm in a very strange position, which I never thought I would, I would be in. Harry stole the biscuit. I'm Elena, and this is Sorelli, and this is our home, La Vagabond. <laughs> We've been sailing around the world for the last five years and have recently found ourselves with a stowaway. Meet Lenny. Subscribe and welcome aboard. We're approaching the halfway point on our journey, 3,200 nautical miles east across the North Atlantic Ocean, taking Greta Thunberg to the climate conference in Madrid. A trip like this with the boat we have can take up to 20 days. We've been doing pretty well for time, averaging about 10 knots. It has been go, go, go lately with sails up, sails down and not a moment to spare, but that's what it's all about and it's been good fun. We've only got 1,500 miles to go of the 3,000, but we've actually gone a lot further than that because we went south, avoiding death and destruction, and then have come back up again. I'm having a beer. Lenny's having some broccoli. We've had the best few days of sailing at the moment. It's been consistent 20 to 25 knots. We're sailing downwind. I'm about to make some vegan cookies. I got some like ready-made cookie dough. I'm just gonna cut them up, pop them in the oven, Easy as, can't mess them up. Pushing our boat to its limits each day has taught me in particular a fair bit more about our boat and how she handles. I've been a bit of a spectator on this trip seeing as I'm mostly on baby watch. I've also learnt a hell of a lot about climate change from Greta. Most of our conversations included me or one of the others picking her brain about the subject. I feel pretty lucky for this opportunity and I hope I can learn even more about it and help share the information confidently someday soon. Now, what's it like to be you? It's... I don't know really. It's... I'm in a very strange position, which I never thought I would, I would be in. But it, it feels like people should know that I and all the other young climate activists, we, we are not doing this to... I mean, because we want to, or because we want to become famous, or because we, we want to become politicians so we want you to listen to us. Uh, we are doing this because we want to get you to act and we want to get you to listen to, to the science. We would love to, to not have so much responsibility. It is too much responsibility for, for, for teenagers. So I mean, we would love if, if you watching this would, would help us out and would take uh, your fair share of the responsibility and, and make your voice heard as well. What's the best course of action for each individual at home to help reduce or maybe even help reverse our impact on climate change? What are some things people can do at home? Uh, if, if there was one thing I would say, I would tell everyone to do, it would be to, to try to inform yourself about the situation from a holistic point of view and try to understand what is happening. But also one very important thing is to vote uh, during elections and to, to make sure that your voice gets heard. But then there are of course many, many things you can do, like in your habits, to try to reduce your um, carbon footprint. Go vegetarian, vegan, and you could uh, stop flying or fly less. Um, uh, have a shop stop or consume less uh, to only buy things you absolutely need. Make sure that you don't waste things unnecessarily. Yeah, Thank you. 
We've passed the halfway mark now, and that fact has energised us all. We have the randomest dinner tonight. We have boiled sweet potatoes, couscous, and then a like stir fry of aubergine, onion, and garlic. And oh, and vegetarian sausage. You're so big. When are you gonna walk? I think you'd be walking if we didn't take you on this He trip. was really trying to walk today. Who <laughs> stole the biscuits? <laughs> You're coming to prison. What's Nikki up to? Nikki is trying to fix her jacket. Look at this. Sad, it's a sad day for Heli Hansen. Oh. Split right down the middle. I'm just going to make it come out first. If you want to see what I've been doing basically this whole trip, this is what sums it up. Sitting on my bum in different spots around the saloon, entertaining Lenny and making sure a wave doesn't knock him over. He started walking before this trip. The crew actually all saw his first steps in Wayne and Judy's lounge room, which is pretty special. But his growth has been stunted from being stuck on a rocking boat for now, so he just climbs things and gets well and truly stuck into everything on board. No corner goes unexplored. Come here. Mum's gonna go brush her teeth. Come on. Oi. Get back here. Come on. As you can see, the bathroom is quite grubby. It consists of baby food, clothes trying to dry. They don't dry outside. They just get salt all over them. And um, Bradley's beard hair. It's very delicious. But considering there are five adults living on this boat, working together as a team, getting it done. Feels good. Lenny likes to play here while I brush my teeth. So Riley's been sleeping in Nikki's bed while Nikki's on shift, um, so that Lenny and I can have this room and he doesn't wake us up when he comes to bed and we don't wake him up like because Letty cries in the night and stuff and if you're on two hour watches you really want to make the most of that two hours off to sleep and me and Lenny have all this space to ourselves hey we're having a ball aren't we we're having a ball in here all right I'm gonna jump into bed say good night good night guys Sitting in a hole, um, we're now doing five knots where we would really like to be doing minimum seven. So we're a bit like, what should we do? What should we do? We were going to go south near the Azores, we decided to go north and follow a system coming across so we would have quite good tailwind which would get us home. But then there's a system at the end um, which is quite powerful and we would end up with headwinds which is not it's not dangerous but there's a level of comfort which we would like to maintain which we won't get uh, so we're trying to avoid that and we're also trying to avoid there's a the, this next system that comes through uh, the one behind that is actually quite powerful if we aren't able to hang on to this one for long enough then we'll um, fall behind and we'll get caught up in this guy which we don't want so we need to really be cracking on. I notice. I notice all kinds of things sitting on the floor with Lenny. Um, while he's playing with the pots and pans in this morning, I noticed the leg of the chair and that holds up the desk is loose. The screws have come loose on the floor and the chair was like sitting on the floor. And so what's going to happen when we arrive in, uh, in Portugal? Well, no, no one knows what's going to happen when we arrive. Uh, we just know that we're going to arrive sometime next week. And it will probably be 
some people there welcoming us and after that we will probably take a shower or something <laughs> and yeah. uh, after Lisbon uh, I'm going to uh, Madrid uh, where I will participate in the COP25 uh, UN climate change talks uh, and after that I will go home for Christmas Yay! Yay. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that I'm looking forward to. Amazing. How long have you been away for a lot now? I, I, remember I left home on uh, 3rd of August. Yeah, that's when I left home. So it's, uh, it's a few months now. I would actually like to ask you something about um, Stonte. You, you yeah. kind of dragging your dad around the world. <laughs> How does that work between you? Is it, um, is it fun? Is it fun? Or are you kind of just dragging him around the world? I, I hope he's enjoying himself um, <laughs> uh, during in the middle of all this. Uh, I know I am, and uh, I think he is too. Basically, I'm the one who decides where we will go and what we will do. So, um, so yeah, it's it's a bit of a strange relationship. It's like roles reversed. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, he needs to take care of me. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. But now we're going home, and uh, he doesn't have to to travel for a while. Right. Can the girls just stop? Yep. Slightly, just a bit too small, but it's great when it's on. It's uh, Mickey's. Yeah. What's for dinner, Greta? What's for dinner? What? What's for dinner? Sorry, I'm listening to audiobook. We've mixed um, two different kinds of soup to get a lot because we only had two of each can. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and also some beans to make it thicker. It looks alright. What do you think? I don't know. We'll see. It doesn't smell horrible. <laughs> <laughs> now we'll get back to my very yeah. depressing book. Yeah. 1984, hey? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Good luck. Thank you. We had a few dead patches and it's filled in and we are like hooning along average of 10 knots which is pretty good surfing at 16 18 regularly it's the boat's humming very very nice sailing right now so now covering the feet come to dance there's no harder to float. so at night time Nikki and I have been doing we started off it was when it was really really hard we we're doing two hours on, two hours off. We we're pretty exhausted after the first seven days, but now we're a bit more relaxed. We've got a tail breeze. If one person's going strong, we'll even do four hours. Um, and there's been a lot less hand steering, and uh, it's just been much more manageable. So this is, what, this is what I do. I sit here, and I look at the apparent wind speed, the wind speed, feel the state of the boat, how safe and comfortable or smooth it sort of feels. Look at the sea state, get up, go outside, check for clouds. So there's a there's a, a amount of force that you're willing to accept which is way below what the rig can actually handle. In the middle of the North Atlantic you're going to really be taking things carefully. Having said that, the less time you spend out here, the less chance there is that you'll get swallowed up by some sort of massive storm. Hey, hey, hey. Good night, honey boy. Go to sleep. Be a good boy for mum. Alright? 
huge wave come and hit our boat and it's the first time we've ever had this much water in here it's everywhere and Lenny's still sleeping believe it or not but we were like we just got thrown across the room hey that was so bad you're right Greta yeah I'm fine that was crazy yeah I'm so glad no one fell over you were like there hey yeah you just I grabbed was... hold of that it's fine down here, everything. No water down there? No, it's fine. Maybe the mat soaks it up. Okay. It's clogged. Going to try and give it a pump out. Good morning. It's the last drive of the trip. Nikki's getting up for shits and gigs just to participate in the last job. It's our last job, everyone. Hopefully. <laughs> Cashmere or whatever they were, they're so nice. You I'm bastards! Oh my love for the Day 17, my friends. We are getting there. Woo, woo, woo. 777 nautical miles to go as of this morning. Good job, so lovely. Across the Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Join us next week as we finally make it to dry land. And we tell you the hidden stories behind the story with our intimate interview upon arrival. Nothing that was missing. I've, I've, I did that job by myself because I was too stressed out to mm. ask for help. But anyway. <laughs>